All right, so this quilt label is going to be sewn on a piece of fabric and it will have to be cut out and attached to the quilt somehow. So in my experience, one of the best ways to do this is to stitch another piece of fabric face down around the perimeter and then when I cut a hole in that top piece of fabric and turn it to the back side, it's going to turn all of these edges. And then I just have this beautiful edge that I can um, uh, hand sew this label onto the quilt. So to make that simple to do, I'm going to um, do a couple of things first. First, I want to change the pull compensation on this outline. So I'm going to come into the effects and go to others. And you'll see that the pull compensation is right here. And right now it's at 0.20. I'm going to zoom in and we'll watch the effect that changing this will happen. And it recommends the 0.40 for auto digitized and magic wand. So I'm going to go to the 0.4 and you keep your eyes on this. And when we apply it, watch how much fatter and fuller it becomes. Boom. So that's going to look nice. Um, I'm going to choose all the lettering and go back into the effects. And it's recommended for bolder lettering. And this is kind of a large label. So I'm going to go to 0.35 from the default of 0.2. Now it may or may not be that it looks good. So I'm just trying and I'm going to say apply. Boom. Yep, it looks a little fuller and a little nicer, so I think I'll leave that. Yep, that looks good. So the other thing I'm going to do, let's close the effects box, is make that outline now. So I'm going to select the hexagon and come over to the edit toolbox. I'm going to choose outlines and offsets. And I only want the offset outline. I don't want an object outline that would be inside or on top of that satin. I want to offset that outline. I know from just checking it that 0 0.03 was far enough away that it ended up around the perimeter the way I wanted it. I only want one. Uh, a single stitch is fine, and red in color is fine. So now I'll say OK. And here we go. When I created the outline, it outlined both sides of this object because it's a fill stitch. I can tell it's a fill stitch because it's um, down here in the fills, that's what's active. Yep, right here, the fills, the satin fill is what's active. So it did both sides. I want to delete the one on the inside. I could either just select that one, they're individual, or I could separate out to see the individual objects and choose just that one. Because they're red, it's hard to tell that it's selected, um, but it is pink and it is selected. And I see that selection mark right there, so I'm going to push delete on my keyboard. And now I have just the one outline. Now I want to check the overall size of the whole thing, so I'm going to push uh, Control A, select it all, and then zero on my keyboard so I can see everything and we'll check the size. This is 6.42 wide and 6.685 high. That's kind of big. Um, I want to, I'll put it in my midi hoop maybe. I've got proportional sizing um, locked and that's great. And I think let's just make this um, six total, the whole thing, and it will proportionately resize that I'm going to come up and click on Show Hoop with a right click. Yep, 
right click and I use a Bernina 8 series machine but you could select whatever machine you use and I'm going to choose the MIDI hoop and I don't want it to start at the needle position automatic centering is fine I will be using the 26 foot and yes I want the hoop to show when I say OK and it's going to fit in that MIDI hoop just fine so so the last thing we need to do is make sure that this red outline sews last and in the color film you have these positioning arrows and I'm going to say move to the end. So now I'm going to go back to showing objects and when this stitches it's going to make that pretty satin. Then it will do all of the lettering and then the last thing I'll put another piece like I said I use fusible poly mesh. I would put that fusible side down, stitch around the perimeter, and then when it's done sewing, I would slice into the poly mesh and have some fabric to turn to the back side. And since I made it fusible side down, that would mean then that the sticky was out and I can iron it onto the surface of the quilt and hand sew it. Now all we need to do is save the file. And when you save in version 8, it saves it as an art file, an all-in-one style. File, save as, and it says Bernina all-in-one version 8. And that's all you can save it as, is an all-in-one file or a Wilcom all-in-one file. And that means that that is an, um, a full file that's editable later. So Shelly Quilts Label 2, that's what I'm going to save it as. I just popped it out on my desktop. Yep, I'll replace that. It's ready to go. That is not a stitchable file. And this is different from saving things before um, that you can only save it like that. If you want to save it as a stitchable file, you need to come either... Well, let's start this way. The first way is to say File, Export Machine File, and that's going to put it in my embroidery, my machine file folder. And we can talk at another time about how all these files are organized in the software. You can save that anywhere you want, but the software wants to put it in your machine files folder. And then it's going to be a stitchable file, EXP. You also, if you owned another style of machine or you were making designs for someone else, you could send it out as a stitchable file as any of these file formats. Art doesn't stitch except on a Bernina 73200, and that's the only .art file there is, and that's an art version 4 or below. We're just going to stick with the USB stick and say save. That puts that on my computer. If I want to send it directly to the USB stick to sew, and I don't want to even save it as an EXP on my computer, I can just come to this little sewing machine right here. And it says write to card or machine, and that's going to bring up this very familiar, if you've used a Bernina at all, device selection window. EXP on the USB stick is what we would select and then it would go um, and find your USB stick and put that on your stick and then you would remove the, the stick and take it to your sewing machine and sew. So this is Shelly with Sew Shelly Quilts. Version 8 software um, uh, is something I like to do a lot so I might like to share a lot let me know if that's of interest to you and I hope it is and um, uh, be sure and subscribe to the YouTube channel or go to my website so shellyquilts.com Facebook wherever you can find me and um, happy new year can't believe it's 2020 we'll probably work on this quite a bit more this particular label and just really change it up and see some cool things we can do with that. So, Happy New Year!